Hello everyone and welcome to ES Repair again. I'm your host Wizkid. Today I'm going to show you how to clean the carburetor and change the fuel pump diaphragm in a brief of Stratton twin cylinder 18 horse engine. It's not an overhead valve so it's a regular valve. And it's about a 92 model, 93 so it's about 20 years old, 17. Anyway, to start out you need about a half inch wrench or a flat screwdriver or a half inch socket. You'll have to pardon all the bugs flying in here. We were leaking gas right in here earlier. And while we left to go somewhere, we left the light on in the window up. It'll get dark out. Yeah, I wonder whose fault that is. Yours. Ain't mine. Start by taking the breather cover off, top of it. And keep up all your boats and everything where everything goes. And might want to lay the tool that you use out so you know where they're at. And don't get them messed up the tools that you don't need. Ew, that really needs cleaning. Supposed to be two of these here, two nuts, but one of them missing, I got the mower. And take that up. Okay. Now you need about a 5 sixteenths. To take these three screws out, you'll need a 5 sixteenths socket or 8 millimeter might work. Okay, that gets that off. You got your little valve breather tube here, you can just pull it out, but be careful, don't break it. And that leaves clean too. Okay, now we're down to the carburetor. And you got one, two, three, four screws that takes it apart. And look at all your mechanisms to see how they go. That right there, both to that screw, or bolt. And it goes in right there, and this lever goes right there, and comes over here to this, on the bottom hole. Okay. You can either use a flat screwdriver, or that looks like it needs a star wrench, or the 5 sixteenths. You always, when taking something apart, want to paint, especially for the first time, if you're not used to it, pay attention to where everything located, how it goes, and how it sucks, etc. Like I said, remember how all that goes. Like I said, pardon the bugs. Remember what boats go where and how everything's hooked up and set up, like I said. How all your cables are ran and wires in case you had to take some loose or move some. And a word of caution when you're working around gas like this, make sure there's no open 
flames or something that could cause a spark. Also, make sure you're working in a well ventilated area because of the fumes. And when you go take this apart, if you look under here, your float is underneath your gasket here. Sometimes they stick when you do, you need to take a knife, kind of go under the gasket, or if you don't, it'll rip it all up when you bring it up. And ease your carburetor thing off here. Your connecting rod. Usually, this thing here is full of gas, but I ran a lot more out of gas. And I didn't want to put none in it until we got this done. Pull your pin out. Watch where you put it so it don't roll down in nothing. And make sure that goes down in your valve breather tube. Take the float out. And you can kind of shake it to see if it's got a hole in it. If you hear fluid shaking down in there, guess it's got a hole in it. Brass ones are bad about this, especially when they solder it together. And see, here's your diaphragm. Needle valve. Observe how it goes. There it is. What you want to do, start off, you always make sure you've got safety glasses in case the stuff would fly back in your eyes. You got all the holes here. One there where your gas comes in, needle valve, there, there, and there. Then kind of clean it out and clean it off. So all you got to do is Watch where it might slow on you. Is that supposed to happen? No. No comment from the peanut gallery. Oh, I'm sorry. Blow it out real good. Clean it off. Cleaning it off on the outside ain't as bad important, it just helps the looks of it. And it also kind of helps stop from falling back in it when you go to put it back together. Blow through the holes. Some of it come through and some of it blow back at you because the hole's so little it can't handle the volume. Take your wire, a real small wire, and head down in there. Make sure it goes freely, and don't try to force it too much if you don't want to go, because you break it off in there. Then you'd really be in trouble. Go ahead, it'd be really hard to get it back out if you even did. See, it comes out there. Some of them go all the way through where it come out and some don't. Like that. No more run that you just wanted to run with it, have to make it run good with choked out. And look down in here and see if you see any holes. That's why it's best to do it broad daylight. And after you do that, bring your carburetor cleaner back in it. Make sure you get all the holes poked out. Okay, that's all hit for now.
Okay. On this here, the bolt part, like I said, it's normally filled with gas. But in this case, I ran it dry, so we ain't got to worry about that. There's just a little bit in there. You can drain it by taking, in this case, a 5 8 It could possibly be a 3 quarter. There. Socket or wrench. Make sure you got something underneath it to catch the gas. Then you also got to take this out anyway because there's more jets under here. I'll just go ahead and clean the bolt off. Some of them screw out, but that might with it. Some might not. That might with an Allen wrench. But I don't see one in here right at the moment. But it looks like it might. Let me go get one. Should know. Okay. Next, we have to clean all this out. The jet in here. Just stick it down in there. Spray through it, and then spray it. Make sure it goes both ways good. Kind of spray it out good down in there. Spray all your holes again in here. See the safety glasses? I always try to spray every way I can to make sure it's going to go right. <coughs> spray down in there. Really good. And take your little wire. Poke it through all your holes. Some of them may go all the way through and some of them may not. Don't force if you don't want to go, because you may get it hung up and broke, then you'd really be in trouble. And kind of take it and blow back to them again. Blow anything you knock loose out. Put my hand over it so it don't come out and hit the camera. Like I said, make sure you get your under catching extra and kind of blow it off. Do not get done on your diaphragm stuff or diagram. Blow your thing off, your little float. And since I'm going to replace the pump, I'll go ahead and kind of spray that off. Make sure it doesn't get you down in there.
Might spray a little on your linkages to help free them up if they're gummed up. Later you can put some silk lubricant on them. Now, what we can do is take some compressed air. You don't want to use full force. My tank is a 60 gallon tank, 125 pounds. You don't want to use a full force. What you want to do is just kind of make sure you face glass and you like that. <clears throat> Do the same thing to the top. Watch, make sure your neck goes flying out when you do it. <laughs> Now what you do, take it, make sure your dye brown goes on first, let it come off. Two ways it can go. But remember your hole here, that's one thing. And I'm just spraying that one. No, surely not. Well, make sure that hole goes over that hole. Like that. So remember, that hole in the gasket has to go over that. Not close it off. Take your floating needle valve. Put it down in there. Take the pin. Slide it through. Bugs. Yeah. Now you just turn it over. Remember your linkage rod that goes with it. Right there. You might accidentally have to take the cable loose on this to get it to go right. Set it down on there like so. Now you're gonna go ahead and take the cable loose. That's your choke cable. Make sure your gasket don't get off the lines or nothing.
And another reason that hole's gotta be open because it's got the corresponding hole right there it's gotta go through. And you take four bolts. Hook it back up. Start your bolts first. Make sure they go good so you don't strip them because you don't want no air leak for fuel leak. Run the hot motor. And the air leak can also stop it from running. And the fuel leak can start a fire. If you strip the boat out where it won't seal right. Make sure you get them good tight with a little seal, but don't over tighten or you'll break something or strip it. Don't forget your other bolt here. Now, Now to set it, pull your choke all the way out. Make sure it closes it. Make sure it shuts it open all the way like it does when you push it in. Make sure it closes and opens all the way.
Okay. Now, we're going to put a fuel pump assembly in it. Always watch where you put wire. And where the hoses go, the bottom one goes to your crankcase lit down here, which creates vacuum to work your pump. The other hose goes to your fuel tank. Usually one on the bottom is to vacuum and one on the side here is your gas supply. Watch how you take this apart. Some of them are easier than others. Especially if you've never done it before. Which I haven't. So this is new time for me. And like I said, make sure you got something underneath to keep the dripping, catch the dripping gas. Hold against it. And lay your screws up here. Pay attention to how everything is on here and comes off. Take your vacuum line off. Okay. Got a little spring there. Spring there, the cap behind it. The spring underneath the flapper. And another gasket thing back here. Sometimes you can just buy the gas get or diaphragm by yourself, or you can get the whole enchilada. Springs and all. Pay attention to how they go. Of course, with three screws, it's pretty obvious. Got diaphragm the gasket. The gasket goes just the metal piece. See? Safety the glasses. Spray it off. And do not get carburetor cleaner on your new gasket. It'll ruin them. Make sure it's dry. Make sure your breather hose is open. And them are. Them two little holes there. I'm going to wait a few minutes for it to dry. Then I'm going to put it back together. Okay, make sure it's cleaned out good in there. Now we put the new gasket back in. You can see how it's shaped. Make sure it's down in there good. Then you put your other gasket on here. You got your three screws. So it's pretty obvious how it goes. Okay, now we got that part. Now, we work on this. 
Get a little free there. That. Okay. Bring it off real good and blow your hose out. And let it dry off. <laughs> and you can tell by the shape of it that that has to go get that. Now it's curved there and that's curved. So it have to go like that. Okay. Now got two little sprays here and a big spring and a little thing. Right now I only want one of the little springs. So I'm going to lay right there to it falls through on the floor. So I'll put it right there. Do not stretch or alter these springs in any way. And you got to put these springs on here and be very careful because they like to fall all over the place. Okay. There's that part, or half. Lay it up somewhere out of the way. Now, remember, get these other three parts. Okay. They go there. Peel that off. And I'm going to put these back to bags because I'm going to be spraying carburetor cleaner over it. There's your old spray that goes on that one. They are kind of cruddy looking. Okay, now. Spray all that out, carburetor cleaner. Did I feel that went? Okay. Like I said, spray out all your holes. Get all good and clean. Like I said, gotta let it dry. Okay, now as you can tell, it's a lot more cleaner. Of course, you didn't get a before shot, but you got where your spring goes, the main pump, spring, and all your holes here all cleaned out. And like and that's another reason I clean the cover out so nothing can fall down in there. Okay. Now we put it back together. First thing we do, get our little spring out.
Okay. It went on this right here. Okay. Good God. I heard too much growling. You pay attention to how the other one come off. And it has no choice but turn it around, it's gonna go like that, but remember, you gotta have this over here. Turn it around be like that. We kinda match that up to that. Like so. See how it fits better? Okay. Take your new spring with that little metal piece on it that sits right in that opening there. When that goes on, it's got to go on like this. Like so. I'm going to take a couple of the screws. And I'll warn you, they ain't going to be easy to do sometimes. With a big spring wheel. Okay, like I said, I've got screws through it. Back to the way it goes. That other spring under there. And that cap with the big spring under there. Now all I got to do. Is just to put it. Back together. And you got to be patient and gentle with these. Because they can be very frustrating. When they take them apart, they're usually stuck together from however how long they've been together. Take a flat screwdriver. And like I said, make sure everything lines up right. And tight, snug your screws up before you tighten them up. Tighten them up real good, but don't over tighten your long break or strip something. Check your holes for cracks, which that could have one, it cause a vacuum leak or any obstruction. And while you're cleaning your car and replacing your pump, it wouldn't be a bad idea to go ahead and replace your diaphragm in there, but they hardly ever go bad, so you be your own judge, but they can. And at the same time, it really wouldn't hurt to place your fuel filter and check your hoses for cracks. But I don't have any new fuel filter, so right at the moment, I'm just going to have to put it together like this. Keep an eye on how things are going. 
Tighten your clamp foot. Be careful when you're using a screwdriver so that they don't actually slip and stab your hand. I put them out of my mouth enough to die. Okay. Remember earlier when I made the comment about the languages and lubricating them? Okay, you kind of squirt them. 70 40 on them, or whatever. Your cable. Okay. And you never work on, want to work on anything like this on a hot motor. Especially with gas. And I spray this cover air cleaner so it can be soaking. So it doesn't fall, just dirt out here so it can't fall back down in there. Might have to take a screwdriver or something and kind of scrape it loose. Bring it out real good, but put your glasses back on. Kind of spray the bottom off too, I guess. So we can't drop them down in there. We have to use a screwdriver, pocket knife, or spatula. Kind of. Clean it up, don't have to be perfect. So you kind of slick it up a little. Okay now, I'm gonna put it back on. Remember your little breather thing. Make sure that's clean where that can go down and hit. Okay. Take your screw. You see there, like I was telling you about that hole, it goes through your breather too, earlier.
tighten them up. We'll snuggle up real good first. Don't over tighten because you'll break or strip something. Okay, now. Next, put this piece back on. You clean it off, it's a little dirty. Now, if you notice your pre filter here, it's extremely dirty. And I'll show you how I clean them here in a minute. Check your air filter, see how dirty it looks. They can look clean but still be stopped up. Some people take a light put behind them, they can see the light, then they know it's clean. Blow it out. Okay. That comes out too, in case you're wondering. There's your air filter. The whole purpose of the pre filter is to keep this clean. It catches the big stuff, and then the air filter catches the rest of the little stuff. Get this clean. What I'll start out by doing, and don't spray it towards your board. You don't want to get back the carburetor. Blow it off the bed. Okay, I have to get it blowed off real good. Take some carburetor cleaner for nasty. Spray it real good. Okay. And kind of wet it, squeeze it around. Kind of let it soak a little bit though. We can get all the grease out of it. Kind of wring it out. And you want to do all this in the well ventilated area, like I say, called the carburetor fume and the gas fume. Okay. Now we take it upstairs, believe it or not, and wash it out with soap and water. Okay, now you take the water, get as hot as you can stand it, lukewarm anyway. Don't get nothing on your dishes. Preferably don't do it in the bathroom sink. See all the stuff in the outlet? Or the kitchen sink, rather. Use a good detergent on it. Cut grease. Oh, it's full of cut. I know. You won't get it perfectly looking like you, but do the best you can. The warmest water is just standing. And do it to their time.
you have kind of forced something of it out. That's still there. And yeah, I know I'm using the kitchen sink, but that's all I got at the moment. Just be careful where you get it and rinse it out real good. Rinse it out real good. Now once you get it washed out real good and wrung out real good, you let it dry real good. I'm going to take the air hose and blow some of the water out of it. That's clearer than what it was. Of course. If it's really, really old or really, really dry right or real bad and greasy, you might want to replace it. They're only two or three dollars. Well, depending on where you get it. Then you're supposed to lightly lubricate it. Whether it's look like WD-40 or something. The oil helps to catch some of the dust. Then just kind of squeeze it to evenly distribute it. That's actually you let it dry real good. Okay. Take your breather again, just stretch it right back over it. Maybe a little bit loose till it dries. Make sure it's covered good. This catches all the major stuff, and the rest of the filter catches all the small stuff that filters through. Put it back on. Then take your wing nut, put it back on, pack it down, remember your metal plate and the one under it. Now you can take a carburetor cleaner or the rag and kind of clean it out in here so it don't get sucked down into it. Okay, last almost last up is you put your breather top back on. Like so, take your screw and screw it back in. And sometimes, bottom out, it, these here may have clamps on them like here, where you take a pair of pliers and just squeeze them together and pop them up, slide them back. Or they may have a screw clamps like that, where you have to have a flat screwdriver or a quarter inch socket. And here, when you tighten this down, you got to have a either a flat or a half inch socket or wrench or a flat screwdriver. Tighten it down tight but don't break nothing or over tighten it. Okay, then you're done. So put your hood back on and hook your headlights back up. And I ain't going to show that because so many hoods come off in so many different ways to go what kind of lawnmower you got and who made it and what year. Well, this concludes this part. We're not going to start it tonight because it's out of gas and it's late and it's dark. We don't want to start a neighbor. So first thing tomorrow when we get up, we'll take it outside, fill up gas and start it up. We'll try it out and see how we did. And we'll film that party to see. Thank you for watching.